It'll be just a great time for that. And we'll have a little contest with it. Well, I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to do kind of uh, give a little gift card or something for the winner of that. And uh, let's see, what else do we have going on here? Uh, small groups. I think, I don't know if we have a slide for that, but that's going to be starting on Tuesday nights in February. Uh, just want to invite you to join us. I think it'll be at uh, Scott and Inger Lisa's. Um, this time around, so I just want to invite you. I think it's going to be at like 6 or 6.30. It's going to be a little bit earlier in the day, in the evening, and uh, we're going to be going through uh, the Case for Faith uh, series, and that's just going to be a great opportunity, and that starts February, I think the first Tuesday in February is the either the second or the fourth. Anyway, um, I'll be looking forward to that as well. Um, one more thing um, that we'll be doing is uh, we'll be having a church business meeting. Um, I believe that's going to be February. Uh, it's going to be a Sunday at 3 o'clock. I think it's like February 13 or 16th. Obviously, I don't really know my dates well. I don't think uh, we have a slide for that. But it's just a time just to kind of share with you uh, where we're going here as a church and uh, kind of a little background with our uh, a budget and kind of the finances um, uh, here that uh, we're currently in. Also, one more thing, we're going to be meeting at a different theater next week, same building, but we're going to be meeting, I think, back in the old one, Theater 10, I understand. They're going to be totally gutting out this entire theater. They're going to be putting nice kind of recliners in, and uh, I don't know if they're going to be heated or what, but uh, they're going to be nice little <laughs> uh, things that... Uh, so hopefully we can get back in here and uh, enjoy those. And uh, but of course, probably more tendency to fall asleep that way, probably. But that'll be just okay. Well, um, in case you don't know who I am, my name is Sam, and <clears throat> I uh, kind of am the guy that Scott has <clears throat> do stuff. <clears throat> As he, as he says, he says that uh, I have Sam do stuff that he doesn't want to do. So that's kind of the way it is. And so they are away. They'll be back next week. And I'll look forward to seeing them here again. But uh, we're just going to move on to our series, the final series um, in our Alter Ego series this week. Um, so if you would just, uh, just pray with me right now. Just uh, say, repeat with me. Say, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me. to be what you want me to be. Help me to do what you want me to do, because people without you go to hell. Amen. Like I said, we are completing our uh, final week in our Alter Ego series, and of course we know that Alter is A-L-T-A-R, not the Alter, A-L-T-E-R, and that is basically, it's an altar is a place where God's people go and sacrifice different things to God as a way of worshiping Him. And uh, ego is basically kind of the way we see ourselves. It's where we find our self-identity and self-worth, whether it be through, uh, you know, unfortunately what people say to us or just different influences in our life. And the whole entire theme of this series is that we have the idea that we need to lay down who we are, all our tendencies, and lay it down at the altar of God and allow Him to teach us uh, to be who we really are in Him. And uh, the first week in the series, Scott talked about feelings of inadequacy, or things basing things on maybe what we've been told in the past. I know there's different times in my life where maybe someone said something 10 years ago, and, and I'll just I'll remember it, and I'll think, man, and I'll just feel so down about that. Those are feelings of inadequacy based on what people have told us in our past. Or, and then uh, the next week, we talked about the need for control. You know, how many control freaks are in here? Hopefully after that series, you're not anymore. But after that week, you're not anymore. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of have a tendency to want to, to be in control of different things in life. I want to know what's going on and plan everything out, which is great. You want to have, be scheduled. You want to have different things. But sometimes we just get out of hand and we just need to step back and say, God, you take control of my life. I do not need to have complete control of my life. I give that all to you. And then last week we talked about the right to be offended. And this week we are talking about the fourth point in our series is our longing for approval. My longing for approval. And uh, when I think of areas that we may long for approval, it may be in the areas of decision making. 
You know, I can think of you know, different times where I'll make decisions and I'll base it on what other people think, what other people say. And I know I've noticed that the bigger decisions that I make sometimes are a little bit easier. You know, when, when they're big decisions that maybe involve, you know, who to marry or, or uh, you know, family different thing, things or finances. You know, when you know that they're based strictly on Scripture, if God's Word backs it up, there's no, no argument about it, it's easy to make. But you know what, sometimes in our day-to-day decisions, it can be a little bit difficult. Maybe our day-to-day decisions involve maybe other people. Maybe our coworkers, and maybe peer pressure gets involved, and we want to please them rather than pleasing God. We long for their approval as opposed to God's, and it can be very difficult. You know, it can be very difficult to to want to 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 please God rather than people, especially if what you want to do, what you're choosing to do, is in the minority of beliefs. I know I just try so hard. I've learned that you know what, I'm I'm just going to base every thing on God's word and not be concerned with being validated by people. I want to be able to trust God in everything he says. And in the past, I, like I said, I, I've, I've depended on people's approval and I, I've, I've, I've needed kind of affirmation and, and, you know, that's kind of where I've in the past have found my self-worth, you know. So instead of being validated by people, which is a very dangerous trap, we need to, to find our comfort and approval in the Lord. And I wonder how many of you can relate with this with the, with this with me this morning. If you do, I, you probably know where I'm going with this. This morning I'm going to talk to you about five signs that you are someone who longs for approval. And these different these five different things, just kind of think, you know, is this me? Kind of question, kind of analyze yourself. Is this me? Is this how I tend to be? Uh, number one, it's on the screen. You worry about what other people think. You worry about what other people think. One of the biggest things that I think people fear is the idea of having to speak in public. That is, how many of you are afraid of public speaking? Okay. Yeah. I think all of us get a little nervous at that idea. Like, I am very nervous right now. And... Uh, um, but we get so scared to death of it. Why? Because you long for people's approval. You're afraid of what people may think. You're afraid that people are judging you. Or, you know, which there's a chance that maybe a lot of people aren't even paying attention to you anyway when you're speaking. Uh, which I hope isn't the case. And obviously you're paying attention since I'm hearing you guys laugh. But, <clears throat> but you know, that, that's an area of public speaking that we long for approval. Or social media. I know this is maybe a little issue for me in the past, especially in college and especially in high school. You want to, you'll post different things online, pictures or different clever things that you think of, and you check every five seconds and like, okay, who's going to comment on this? Who's going to be impressed by this? And you check every five seconds, and you look, and there's nobody saying anything, and so you wonder, oh man, obviously people aren't thinking that I'm too smart or too clever. You find your approval in there. And you begin to obsess about it. Or maybe another thing is, maybe a formal event. Maybe you, you just can't find the right outfit. This isn't me, but um, you, you, you try to, you have a whole bunch of outfits, but you keep saying, oh, I can't find the best one. And really you think about it and it's, you're thinking, man, maybe you're just trying, you're too worried about what people may think about you. Maybe you're too fearful of it. So I just want to ask you this morning, just uh, raise your hands. How many of you have said, you know what, and say I'm in the past, I have had a tendency of being afraid of what people think. Just raise your hand this morning. Okay. Now everyone raising your hand, I want you to look at all those who didn't raise their hand, who are too afraid because they're afraid of what people think. All right. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I've been wanting to, been waiting to use that. Anyway. Yeah, yep. Thank you. All right, moving on. Number two, you are often overly sensitive. You are often overly sensitive. Maybe there's these people in your life where you ask them an innocent question, like, how are you feeling today? And they just blow it way out of proportion, and they're just, they're like, well, what does that mean? Do I look bad to you? Do I look sick? They take it way too seriously. Or the people that you may give a hundred positive comments to, and all of a sudden, one little negative one, and they're absolutely a failure. Going back to the whole outfit thing. 
Maybe you ladies, I don't know about you guys, but you, you, you worry about this new outfit and you go into public and you're afraid of this one negative comment and you just, you get so worked up about it, you become overly sensitive. Or maybe through our communication with our uh, people, our friends and family, maybe, you know, you send someone a text or an email and they don't respond right away. And you, and you obsess over that and you automatically think, oh man, are they ignoring me? Do they not like me anymore? Do they have a new best friend? You know? But we, we worry about that kind of stuff. Number three, you compromise your values. You compromise your values. A sign that you are someone who longs for approval is when you know you have held biblical beliefs and, and values and yet you go the wrong way. Maybe you're in a, you get involved in a relationship that you know that you're not supposed to do a certain thing certain things in your relationship with this person, but you compromise your values and you do things that aren't pleasing to God, what? So you can gain their approval. Or maybe you compromise your values in your, co- in your workplace with your co-workers. Maybe there's a tendency for a group of people to uh, maybe say uh, coarse jokes. You know, I know my place that I work, uh, you know, there's a tendency for people to gossip. And it's so easy sometimes just to fall into that trap. Why? Because, you know, you desire for approval. And you want to fit in. And you don't want to be rejected by them. But instead, we should be striving to live for God so that we do not compromise those values. Maybe another area that we uh, can compromise our values is in the area of our finances. I've known some people over the years that it's clear that they put a lot of their self-worth in what they buy. You know, as Dave Ramsey would say, you know, that you buy things with money you don't have to impress or please people you do not know. Why? Because you want to gain their approval, so you end up compromising your values. So number one, you worry about what others think. Number two, you're often overly sensitive. Three, you compromise your values. Four, you hesitate sharing your faith. And finally, number five, you have a hard time saying no. You have a hard time saying no. I'm happy to say that, well, first of all, I had a tendency in the past to be able to want to say yes to everything. But I, I was able to say no twice after a very long uh, week last week. I said no twice. And I felt, I felt a little guilty. I felt bad. But, you know, it was just so freeing. So sometimes you just got to say no. And you, and you think, you know, why, am I, why do I keep saying yes to anything? Just kind of analyze yourself. Why, am I say, why do I say yes to everything? Is it because I want their approval? Because each time they ask you, you, you cry inside no. But then you end up saying yes. So all these things, think about. You know, do you worry about what others think too much? Do you often become too sensitive do you compromise your values at the sake of, of saving a friendship or not making things awkward? Do you hesitate sharing your faith? Finally, do you have a hard time saying no? Going back to hesitate sharing your faith, you know, you grew up maybe you grew up in the church and you just you know Jesus Christ died for your sins. And yet there's these people that you're, you, you know who need Jesus, but you're just too afraid to share him with them. Because you, you're, you don't want to be rejected by these people. You, you don't want to be called the religious fanatic. And looking at all these five principles, what does it all point back to? I believe it all points back to this little thing called your ego. You know, your ego inside of you, it just cries, you know, affirm me, like me, approve of me. And you become so obsessed with what people think that it becomes a snare. There's a portion of scripture I'd like us to turn to today, or it will be on the screen, that really kind of sums up and gives us a little clue as to why we, we often become like this. It's in Proverbs 29, 25. It says, The fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. The fear of man will what? It'll prove to be a snare. Actually, in Hebrew, snare actually is also a trap. And a trap is the name of a hook that are used in the nose of an ox. 
You know, you, you, you put the hook on the nose of an ox and you can control the entire animal. It's, it's with just this tiny little hook. And so you can kind of see where I'm going with this. You know, you, you, you have this hook or snare of approving people and you just keep walking around with this hook. Approve me, love me, like me. You just long for their approval. I think you get the word picture I'm trying to say here. But whoever trusts in the Lord will remain safe in Him, is what the Scripture says. I'm here to tell you this morning that living to please people, living to please man, is sinful. I'll be even more specific. Living to please people is idolatry. When you're worshiping someone's opinions rather than God's, that is idolatry. You may say this morning, Sam, that's just not fair. I'm not really that way. I don't outwardly worship. But you know what? Putting the opinions of others above God's is making people too big and God too small. And what will happen? I'll tell you what happened. It'll limit God's ability to work in us. Not because he's weak, but because we don't let him in. I keep going back to the example that I think we all can, most of us can relate to, is the workplace. You know, we long to be a leader. A lot of us, you know, you go to, um, you start new jobs, and there is an emphasis of uh, leadership development. You may have to get trained in that. And you, and you go into your workplace, and you want to be approved by the people. But so often, we'll, we'll, be, we'll get to kind of, in the sense, we go by the polls of people. You know, you have these high or low approval ratings. You'll, 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 you'll seek people's approval in the polls if you're constantly worrying about what others think. And I found this to be the case. You know, I, you know ever since I, I've learned the people who gossip, I often will think, man, if they're gossiping about these people, they're probably gossiping about me. And then that, in turn, causes me to seek their approval and be worried about how people think I perform in the workplace. So this all comes back to is the fear of man. Proverbs 29, 25 again says, Fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. So you say this morning, so how do we pass this? How do we overcome this problem? Well, you focus on pleasing God rather than people, and you do not live for the crowd, but for the audience of one. So how do we overcome this disease to please? Number one, focus on pleasing God instead of pleasing people. Focus on pleasing God instead of pleasing people. In Galatians 1.10 it says, Obviously I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. If pleasing people were the goal, you would not be a servant of Christ. You see, you cannot... Live for the approval of man and of God at the same time. It's just impossible. No matter how hard you try, there's always going to be someone who doesn't like you. You're not going to measure up. You're not always going to measure up. And this goes for all of us here this morning. You, you cannot try hard enough. It's just impossible to please everybody. So the truth is, you can always please God this morning. You can't please everyone, but you can please God. I just want to encourage you all to hold on to that truth. Obviously, I'm trying, not trying to win the approval of people, it says, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. May we live for and focus for living for an audience of one rather than pleasing the applause of a crowd. So that's number one, focus on pleasing God instead of pleasing people. The second thing that we can do to, to get past this, to allow God to work in our life, is to live for the approval of God instead of the approval of people. Live for the approval of God instead of for the approval of people. Look at 1 Thessalonians 2.4. It says, On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. Kind of think of it this way. The difference between a follower and a fan. You may be a fan of a sports team, but you may be very wayward. Maybe they, they, they don't make it to the playoffs or they don't win any games. <clears throat> but you may not always stick with them. 
A follower is someone who will always stick with Jesus no matter what, no matter how difficult it gets. And I just want to let you know that, you know, God will always approve of you. If you've accepted Christ into your life, He's already approved of you. And He has a plan and purpose of, for your life to carry out His message. See, when we're too interested in what people think, it'll prevent us from being able to share the message with others. But I want to let you know that this morning, God, if you've accepted Him into your life, He is not looking at your sinfulness. He's looking at you as his child. He's looking at what Christ did on your behalf on the cross. What a beautiful truth that is this morning. This morning I want to go through a number of different things that God says that we are in Scripture. And they're going to be on the screen. <clears throat> just kind of think about this this morning. and Just really let this get into your heart. This is what the Lord says about you. First one, 2 Corinthians 5.17 you are a new creation in Christ. The second one is Ephesians 1 7. You are forgiven and your sins are washed away. You are forgiven and your sins are washed away. Romans 8 37. You are more than a conqueror through Christ. Ephesians 2 10. You are God's masterpiece. And in some translations, it says, You are God's workmanship. Matthew 5 14. You are the light of this world. Romans 8, 11, you are filled with the same spirit that raised Christ. Romans 8, 17, you are a joint heir with Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 20, you are Christ's ambassador. And of course, an ambassador is kind of the highest ranking diplomat that goes from one country to another as we know it. But we are from, come from heaven to earth to share the gospel. We are Christ's ambassador. 2 Corinthians 5.21, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. And finally, you are greatly loved by God, it says in Romans 1.7. See, it doesn't matter what you think. It matters only what God thinks. It doesn't matter what other people think about yourselves. The point is that God has called and equipped you to carry out what he has planned for you. It's not on the screen this morning, but it's Romans 12, 2. It says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let's kind of break that down for a minute. When you live... To sacrifice on the altar. That was kind of the first thing that I wrote down with the altar um, earlier. We need to lay down everything. Lay down um, our, everything that, that troubles us. Our, the seeking of approval from people. We've talked about earlier. Uh, longing to, to kind of be a control freak. And different things. We need to lay those things at the altar. Lay down the, the tendencies to compromise our faith. Or the tendency to, to mismanage our money. Lay down everything at the altar. And allow God to show us. And then the second part of it. It says. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world. Give up your idolatry. Give up your oversensitive tendencies and your compromising tendencies. So I just want to ask you this morning, is God speaking to you today about idolatry? Are others' opinions more important than God's? See, the truth is that God not only loves you, but He has an incredible plan for each and every one of your lives this morning. But you know what? You won't fulfill that plan unless you give into His plan. And you may say this morning, say, I mean, I go to church once a week. You know, I, I give an offering every so often. Or, you know, I'm a good person outside of church. But you know what? That's just not good enough. God wants 100% from you. And I know it does sound scary, you know. Maybe you're one of those control freaks that you're just so hard. It's so hard to let go and let God control your life. I just want to encourage you to not trust others' opinions. Are you going to continue, continually base what others think? 
See, it's about what God thinks about you. He came to die. Even if you were the only one, He came to die for you. I just want to let you know, because our sin separates us from God. We're going to give to the Lord in a couple minutes here. If the band wants to come up, we're going to do a few things before we uh, end the service. But I just want you to kind of analyze yourself and think, you know, first of all, think about your own life. You know, are you, are you somebody who is, you know, you just have the tendency, you know, thinking about all those five points. You know, I mean, if you can just put those uh, points back up on the screen, the five that I had up there. Maybe you're here this morning and, and you say, you know what, I do worry about what others think. I find way too much of my self-worth in what people are thinking about me. Maybe you're an overly sensitive person. And maybe you don't, you don't, you're not where you should be with your values. Maybe you're, you're compromising too much and you're letting yourself be in too many compromising situations. Maybe you hesitate sharing your faith this morning. I just want you to reflect on that today. And uh, you have these cards. And you can go ahead and start playing you have these cards that you were given. And I just want you to put a cross on that card. If you are someone, if this ministered to you this morning, put a cross on there if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord or if this is something that really uh, hit home with you today. Now I want you to put two crosses on there. If you want to pray and believe these things on someone's behalf this morning. And we would love to, to do that. Just put two crosses on there and, and we'll, we just want to agree with you in prayer for that. We're going to close in prayer for a few minutes, but we're just going to spend a little bit more time worshiping the Lord's Yeah. Mm-hmm.
We just thank you for the truth that's in your word this morning. We just thank you that, Lord, we don't need to seek the approval of anyone else, Lord. We have your approval already, Jesus. Lord, just have your way in us this morning, Lord. May we help those who we thought of this morning that just need, need to meet you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, I just pray that you just go before us today, Lord. Bless our day, Jesus. In your precious name. Again for uh, joining us this morning. Just uh, remember next week, Bonanza Bill, invite a friend to the chili contest, and uh, may the Lord richly bless you. We'll see you next week.